Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for November 3rd, 2024. Uh, it is uh, All Saints Sunday for those churches that observe All Saints, one of my favorite um, festivals of the church year. Uh, and uh, if you don't observe All Saints, it's the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. We are in still in First Kings, as we were last week, but we've jumped ahead quite a bit to First Kings chapter 17. We're uh, suggesting that you read uh, verses 1 through 16, and if you like, you can read the whole chapter. Uh, the chapter divides uh, pretty neatly into three parts, uh, but let me talk uh, just a bit about what's come in between. So uh, last week we were at the building and the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem, uh, uh, and Solomon uh, uh, prays uh, at the temple to dedicate the temple. Uh, this week we're in the northern kingdom of Israel. So in between, I guess probably the most important thing to note is that the kingdom has split into two. So under Saul and David and Solomon, you have a united kingdom. Uh, after Solomon dies, his son Rehoboam uh, foolishly um, uh, continues his father's uh, not so good policies uh, in uh, uh, oppressing the people. Uh, and so the northern tribes secede from the union uh, and, uh, and they have a succession of kings. Uh, unfortunately, the kings in the northern kingdom, they're not descended from David uh, and they tend to get a pretty bad rap from, uh, from the, the Deuteronomistic uh, historian, from the writers uh, and compilers of First and Second Kings. Uh, and that is certainly the case here in chapter 17. So we're in the Northern Kingdom, and the king is a guy named Ahab, who uh, ends up being probably the, 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 uh, the number one uh, example of a bad king uh, in, in Israel. Uh, you probably recognize his name. You probably certainly recognize the name of his foreign wife, Jezebel. Uh, these are people who do not uh, keep the covenant with God. They, uh, uh, they worship other gods, particularly the god Baal. Uh, and so, as God uh, always does, uh, God sends a prophet, uh, in this case, Elijah the Tishbite, uh, who comes to Ahab, uh, he he kind of shows up out of nowhere. So some prophets we know the backstory of, right? Like uh, we we talk uh, well, Moses, the greatest prophet, right? We know his uh, where he comes from, and we know something about his childhood story. Elijah just kind of emerges uh, full full grown right? <laughs> uh, into the text, uh, and he is not a uh, he he's a troubler of Israel, according to Ahab. Uh, though Elijah says, I'm not the one who troubles Israel. It's you who are the troubler of Israel. So Elijah uh, is, uh, uh, is sent by God to speak to Ahab. Uh, Elijah prophesies a drought uh, uh, in the first part of the chapter. Uh, God provides for him by a wadi, which is a, a, a seasonal stream bed, right? Uh, provides for him miraculously because ravens come. Uh, and bring him bread and meat uh, twice a day. Um, but then the main the main part of the story really is uh, after the wadi dries up, uh, Elijah goes out of the land of Israel to Zarephath, uh, to the land of Sidon, uh, and comes to uh, the house of a widow. Uh, now we know that widows uh, in particular, along with orphans and foreigners, are the most vulnerable people in Israelite society. Uh, this is true in uh, in the lands around Israel as well. So the the widow of Zarephath uh, is vulnerable, and especially in the midst of a drought. And she has come to the end of her rope. Uh, when Elijah shows up, uh, he asks her to bring a little water in a vessel so that uh, and and a, and a morsel of bread. And listen to what she says. As the Lord your God lives, this is verse twelve. I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Right? Like This is a tale of scarcity. A, little, a, a couple of sticks, a handful of meal, 
uh, a little oil in a jug. Uh, this is all that I have left. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do what I can with that little bit of stuff. And then that's the end of it, right? Then, then there's no more. So, uh, we, we've been talking about the unfolding promises of God. We talked last week uh, that these promises of God are not just for Israel, but for non-Israelites as well. And we see this worked out really in this story of the widow at Zerubbabel. Yeah, I'll jump in. I want to point out a couple of things. Um, and that is that at the end of 1 Kings 16, you get the report that Ahab, uh, King Ahab has married... Um, he has married Jezebel, who is from Sidon. And then Jezebel brings in the worship of uh, the foreign gods, the false gods, precisely the thing that enrages, right, that enrages God to cause this, to announce this, the punishment of the drought. And then following the drought, I mean, here's, here's one of the interesting things theologically, I think, that we can work with. And that is that the Israelites are not, including the faithful ones, they are not immune from the results of uh, the punishment that, um, or the sanction, maybe is a better word, sanction would be a better word, that Elijah does, and including Elijah himself, he is not immune. <laughs> so then Elijah has to go, and he has to become a guest who was reliant on the hospitality of, of, at the very least, we could say unkosher. Um, so first of all, the first thing is at, at, at the wadi, uh, the ravens feed him. And either, either the ravens are literal, that they're birds and they're unclean birds. So if they're bringing him food, um, they're bringing him unclean food, according to uh, the Pentateuchal law, or because the the word for raven is orab, very close to a arab, it could be that the ravens is actually just uh, uh, a racialized term for Bedouins, for those for the the people, and, and because the Wadi Kirit is at the edge of the desert, that that he, either way he is still at hospitality of of the foreigner who's feeding unclean food. Then when that dries up, he's got to go now to Zarephath, which is in Sidon, which is where Jezebel is from. And a widow there, who also is suffering from this drought that he's announced, he has to rely on his, her hospitality. He the people of God here are not the ones who are the get are, are extending like Abraham and Sarah hospitality to the stranger. Here, they're the guest. I think this is an incredibly important lesson for the church today. We need, uh, so if there's new neighbors around you, people who have moved in, they're not of your tribe and religion, um, get out of your church, get out there and go meet them on their turf. Be a guest of their hospitality as you get to know them. And, the, uh, and in that process, uh, extend the word of God. Be such a witness to the presence of God that they're able to experience God's grace uh, through you, in you, because of you. Um, excuse me, because that's what happens. That's what happens in this particular, particular text. And um, a bit of the wonder, I think, of this is uh, in the the end of the verses, that if you read through the the um, the added texts uh, that are included, uh, verse twenty four. So the woman said to Elijah, "Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. If our actions, which you're calling for, um, uh, Ralph." do not cause others to trust God. I don't care what we say we believe. You have to be very sure about what it invites others to believe about God. I, uh, I want to move us in a slightly different direction, if that's okay. Sure. I'm thinking about the, the date, uh, November 3rd. So 
uh, All Saints Sunday. It's also, for those of us in the United States, it's right before a really major national election, presidential election. I, I just want to say this, uh, and, and Rolf, something that you said uh, made me think of this, right? Good leadership is so important, right? Uh, the consequences of Ahab's idolatry, right? The consequences mm-hmm. of Ahab and Jezebel's uh, sinfulness fall not primarily on them, but on their people, uh, mm-hmm. and, and including Elijah. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, one word to say is just, uh, let's pray for good leaders because they are worth their weight in gold. Uh, and especially in this season of, of elections, uh, in the United States. And I, again, I know not everybody listening to this podcast, uh, is in the U S but this is true really across the world. Good, good leadership is something that we need to pray for constantly, and we need to pray for the leaders that are elected. So, uh, so that's one thing I wanted to say. The other is, it is All Saints Sunday, and it's worth mentioning, uh, as you were saying, Joy, the reason that, that the widow says, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. The reason is that Elijah, uh, through prayer, raises her son from the dead, right? She's She's a widow with one son, uh, apparently, and uh, he he became ill and he dies. And she asks Elijah, or actually she she accuses Elijah, Elijah. what have you against me, O man of God? You've come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. Uh, but Elijah doesn't uh, accept that accusation, you might say. He goes and he prays for this child uh, three times and uh, and the child. Uh, the child's life is restored. Uh, Perhaps not a a typical text to read on All Saints Sunday. And of course, you're always welcome to choose other texts along with this one or or even in place of this one. Uh, But certainly uh, 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 one of many stories in scripture that speak about God as a God of life, uh, Mm -hmm. a God who defeats death, Mm -hmm. uh, a God in whom death uh, does not have the final word. Uh, and so we cling to that hope uh, all the days of our life, but especially we remember on this All Saints Sunday, uh, those who have died uh, before us, the saints of God, uh, who even now, uh, according to Hebrews, who even now are part of the cloud of witnesses cheering us on. And we cling to those promises, the unfolding promises of God, uh, to, to bring uh, life uh, even out of death. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.